Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will show you how to find for the range, the interquartile range, the mean absolute deviation, the variance, the standard deviation, and the coefficient of variation. Let's take this example in finding the range. Erica enjoys posting pictures of her cat online. Here's how many likes the past six pictures each receive. Find the range. Here, the formula in finding the range is highest value minus the lowest value. In the given data, the highest value is 21 and the lowest value is 10. Let us plug in the values in the formula. The highest value is 21 and the lowest value is 10. Therefore, the range is 11. Let us now find for the interquartile range using the same example. Since there are six pictures, it is an even number. And I just want to give emphasis that finding the interquartile range for even and odd are different. So here, let us find the median first, and the two middlemost numbers are 15 and 17. To find the median, we need to add 15 plus 17 and divide by 2, and that is 32 divided by 2 is equal to 16. So the median or the middlemost number is 16, and 16 is in between 15 and 17. So this is your median. So since the median measures 50% above and 50% below, let us find the upper median. So we have 17, 18, and 21, and the middlemost number is 18, and we call it as Q3. Then let us find the lower median and the middlemost number here is 15, and we call lower median as Q1. So our Q1 is 15, and Q3 is 18. So what is the interquartal range? The formula in finding the interquartal range is Q3, which is 18, minus Q1, which is 15. Therefore, the interquartal range for this data set is 3. How about if the given data set is odd number? We still need to find for the median, Q1 and Q3 to find for the IQR. So this is odd, therefore what is the middlemost number? The middlemost number is 17, therefore that is our median. And let's find the lower median, that is 15, and we call that Q1. And the upper median is 21, and we call that Q3. Q1 is 15, and Q3 is 21. So here, the IQR is 21 minus 15, which is equal to 6. Let us now find for the mean absolute deviation or MAD. In solving for the mean absolute deviation, it is better if you put the data in a table like this. The first step is find the mean. And in finding for the mean, add all the numbers together and divide it by n. n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this is 96 divided by 6 is equal to 16. Let us now put the value of the mean in the second column. Then subtract x and the mean and get its absolute value. So this will be absolute value of 10 minus 16. That is equal to absolute value of negative 6 or just 6. Here, 15 minus 16 is negative 1 and its absolute value is 1. 
15 minus 16, negative 1. Absolute value is 1. 17 minus 16 is 1. 18 minus 16 is 2. And 21 minus 16 is 5. After that, let us find the total. So this will be the sum of the difference of the score and the mean. So let us add 6 plus 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11, plus 5 is 16. This is equals. Our numerator is the total, which is 16, divide by n is the total number of scores, which is 6. 16 divided by 6 is equal to 2.6667, or if you round this up until two decimal places, that is 2.67. Next, let us find the population and sample variance using the same data set. As you can see, I use the same table. We just have to add one more column for x minus x bar squared. Before we find for the population and the sample variance, we need to get the square of the difference of x and the x bar, and that is this. So simply square 6, and that is 6 times 6 is 36. Then 1 square is 1, 1 square is 1, 1 square is 1. Of course, 2 square is 4, then 5 square equals 25. Again, just take the square of the third column. Then find the total, 36 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 4 plus 25 is equal to 68. The formula in finding for the population variance is summation of x minus x bar squared over n. And let us now plug in the value. So the total is 68 divided by n. n again is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And 68 divided by 6 is equal to just write your answer until two decimal places. That is 11.33. Then let us find for the sample variance. As you can see in the formula, there is no difference except for the denominator. We have to take 1 from n. So this is n minus 1. Let us plug in the value. The total is 68. And n minus 1 is 6 minus 1. That will be 68 divided by 5 equals 68 divided by 5 equals. And that is 13.6. This time, let us find the population and sample standard deviation. What is a standard deviation? A standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. So if the value of the population variance is 11.33 and 13.6, we will simply take the square root of that. And what is the square root of 11.33? Let's take square root 11.33. That is 3.33. 3666, so just limit your answer until two decimal places. This will be 3.36 or 3.37. How about the sample standard deviation? That is simply the square root of the sample variance. So, what is the square root of 13.6? Let's take square root 13.6. 6 is equal to 3.687. Limit your answer until two decimal places. And that will be 3.69 if you round this up. 
And for the last measurement, let us now find the coefficient of variation. The coefficient of variation is the ratio of standard deviation and the mean. And the population standard deviation is 3.37. Sample standard deviation is 3.69. If you remember, the mean that we got a while ago was 16. So let us now find for the coefficient of variation. P stands for population. That is equal to, this is your population standard deviation. So 3.37 divided by, the mean is 16. So let us divide. 3.37 divided by 16 is equal to 0 0.21. Then, let us find for S stands for sample, coefficient of variation for sample. So we will use the value of sample standard deviation, and that is 3.69 divided by the mean is 16. So let us divide 3.69 divide by 16 equals 0 0.23. So this is the value of the coefficient of variation. I hope you've learned something from me today. If you do, please give me a thumbs up and consider yourself subscribe. And don't forget to share this video to those people who need it. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. And please keep safe. Bye-bye.